Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And again, thank you for being part of this family. Please do make sure that you go on and check EE Arts daily as well, as it does seem that we still get more views on Evolutionary when we're covering the same topics as on EE Arts. So make sure you subscribe to all three channels, Evolutionary, EE Arts, and Hearts Ohm. There are links on every single video. Here you see pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas demonstration in front of the White House. The speaker is calling this a revolution. A revolution. Actually, as we've covered on recent videos, you know, there's protests everywhere. Everywhere. There's tensions everywhere. And yet, this is really more of the same thing that's gone on for thousands of years, as we've been saying. Yeah, I mean, they... they do definitely look to be highlighted right now. So we're watching all of this really close everywhere. Yeah, and, and I do think the world is waking up to a much higher degree. And that is really because this is the end of an era. This is the end of an age. This article from Al Jazeera states the NABCA did not start or end in 1948. So what is the NABCA? Well, that's basically the expulsions of Palestinians from what was Palestine in order to create Israel. And so again, what we have, as we said so many times, this is the elevation of one group in order to suppress another group in order to create uh, religious, racial, tribal disharmony to create conflict that never stops and this is where people have to realize the bigger picture and again we we do harp on the religious side of things because what do you have going on here again this is is basically tribal and religious in so many ways and it's obviously ancient and and really it goes back uh, several thousand years Yet it's not going back several thousand years in the way that people might uh, view it if they didn't have a bigger perspective on things. So I wanted to bring this to your to your mind and just give a little history to those that don't understand or haven't really paid attention or followed this from uh, its modern day beginnings, which go back to 1948 in one way and it goes back to actually world war one in another way the balfour declaration again who was behind the restoration of israel when israel uh stopped being a nation in 70 a.d after the romans uh put down a rebellion in the fiercest way possible actually yeah you know if you if you look at what happened to israel in 70 a.d and then you listen to netanyahu uh, speak about the Gaza Strip, well, you know, there there are some uh, parallels that we can see, you know, because Netanyahu is, is saying the other complete, you won't, they, you know, they won't forget this, there won't be really anything left. Well, there wasn't anything left of Israel after 70 AD. Um, the people basically dispersed all over. You know, some did stay in the land and, you know, assimilated. But Again, this is history repeating itself. So you have the Rothschilds in the UN basically bringing about the, the recreation of Israel. Again, that didn't exist from 70 AD until 1948. 1948. You know, this, again, Palestine too really was uh, done by a, a British mandate. Oh boy, you know, th this is so completely orchestrated, one piece of this after another, perfectly lined up in order to always create conflict. It's all about conflict. So what happened? I mean, obviously, if you create a new country out of what was uh, an existing country, you're going to have issues. And by the way, we want to thank you guys for your support over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. So obviously, if the state of Israel is going to be born in an area where there was another state, it's going to impact the people that were living their lives normally in another country, Palestine. So the green shows you Palestine in 1947. And then the UN had their plan. And what did they do? They basically divided it in two. 
and not in very congruous ways either, as you can see. So this is the partition plan right here in 1947. So Palestine gets cut in half or even maybe less than half. And then what we have is a series of wars that break out. And obviously you can expect there's going to be warfare because you're, you're, you're telling people uh, you no longer have a home, literally. Of course, some people are going to fight and other of their friends, neighbors, and, and supporting nations will come and fight with them. And that's exactly what we had. But then you're going against truly the, the power of the UN. Uh, and you end up with the present day Israel on the right, which you see, where's the Palestinian lands? It's maybe, I don't know, 15%, 10, 15%. And then they are truly, as, as were the Israelites in 70 AD, an occupied nation with foreign uh, soldiers ruling the day. And, and you know, the, the treatment is not necessarily going to be fair and even. And so the Palestinian Napka in 1948, or Nakba, I should say, Nab Nakba, the register of depopulated localities in Palestine. Depopulated. Oh, that is a word that's been going around today, has it not? Whole families, whole groups of people uprooted and said, this is not your home anymore. Yeah, you know, you've been living here peacefully. You know, you've done your work. You've set up your yard the way you want. You planted your fruit trees. You got your garden going. Yeah, it's not yours anymore. We're giving it to somebody else. This is going to happen in the U.S. And the U.N. is going to mitigate this in the U.S. as well. I want you guys to, to, to really let that sink in. Because what happened here in 1948, and the reason why we have conflict to this day, this is going to be replayed right now. They're doing the same thing on an even larger scale. Look at these people. You know, they're just by foot, and for the most part, because again, these these are not rich people. No, these are very very poor people, and these are all actual you know uh, photographs of the time period. Uprooted, living simply, just trying to just trying to stay alive, and again, kicked out of their homes, kicked out of their homes. Why? Well, you know, again, it, it, it's religion and it's it's race and it's tribal bounds. And, you know, yet again, if you look at the DNA mixtures, uh, they're very similar for the most part. And we got to recognize, again, the body is just a vehicle. It's just a, be a vehicle. The soul is eternal. As we, we look at some of these photos that show what it was like in that day, it, it, it's ongoing to this day. And now we we're seeing death and destruction on a par that we haven't really seen since the early days of, of war as Israel was being rebirthed through UN and again Rothschild and other Illuminati uh, family uh, lineages. This this is, you know, who had supported this. And the reason they support it is because they got to keep us fighting. And, you know, again, they, they've, and I know a lot of people don't want to face this fact, but they have given us our modern day religions. They've twisted and distorted the original teachings in such a way that instead of uniting, it divides us. So, you know, people fighting to take another's home from them and other people fighting to keep their homes. And again, the one with the more powerful military, the one with the more support from uh, the secret societies and the true controlling system will pretty much uh, come on top. That, that should be a given. The average people suffer. This is horrible. And this is what the guides showed me is going to be happening in, in the U.S. as well. I've had visions of this and, and had another vision last night of basically troops being dropped into the U.S. And so refugees, this is what happened to the Native Americans, a trail of tears. Cindy and I both have family uh, DNA lineage that were more than likely on the tra trail of tears. I, I mean, I know... Uh, that on my father's side, I believe it was his great-grandmother, 
was born in an Indian reservation in Oklahoma, and again, she was forcibly made to go there. Renaming things, yeah, you know, it... it, it <laughs> It, it it just never ends. So, you know, maybe you're used to going down to Main Street, Front Street, whatever it is, and before you know it, it it'll be something in a in a in a language that you don't even understand. And you'll remember when that street was called something very different, but now you know, the people that frequent uh, places there, uh, everybody is different. Well, you know, this is, again, part of that bigger plan. And I know some mentioned the Kalergi plan, which I, I, I'll, I'll go over that in a, a video, but it's bigger than that. Because, again, ultimately what they are doing is, is they are replacing Homo sapiens with something that is going to be much easier to control. And, you know, I mean, looking at this and looking at the overwhelming concept of it all and how do you take this in? How do you even prepare for something like this? I, I don't think there is any way you can really prepare in the 3D and have all of your <clears throat> T's crossed and your I's dotted. Um, no, this goes to a soul level where if you are really honing in on that spiritual practice and we are very spiritual, we do look at organized religion and the Bible and we, do, we have a distaste for that because if you look Quran. into it and in the Quran, if you look deep into it, there is nothing peaceful about it. You know, we do everything we possibly can to live peaceful lives day after day after day and grow our spiritual practice because we too, we know that no matter what, no one's ever going to be prepared for the possibilities that might come, might come to meet us someday, but you can prepare the soul. So that to me is the most important. If you have a good solid construct in your soul, then you can lean into that during hard times. You can lean into that and cope with anything that comes your way if you have that solid practice. But anybody who has really looked into the Bible, the Quran, and has studied it a lot, I don't see how they could stand back and fully support it. You know, you look at the information and these are these are galactic beings. These are beings from another planet, from another origin that are controlling humans. And I don't see how there's any way you could see it other than that if, if you've really studied it and you really know your Bible. Absolutely. So, you know, again, uh, right now, all eyes are on Israel and the Palestinian issue. But again, you know, there's so much other conflict going on, Ukraine, Russia, which Kievan Rus, you go back to 980 AD and look at the map and you see the Kievan Rus as one people. You know, we got to look at all of humanity as one people. The, the reality is we are all immigrants, migrants in this galactic war. And somebody said, you know, it's just so much easier for me to conceive of the biblical narrative as opposed to what you're you know, putting out there. Uh, yeah, but again, the truth is the truth and the reality is the reality. And yet, if you were, say, brought up in certain circles, like if, if you were brought up with Hindu cosmology, uh, again, it, it's stated in uh, the Puranas that there are many hundreds of thousands of different humanoid races just in our galaxy. They knew this. They knew the shape of our galaxy. They knew there were many different races, some benevolent, some very <laughs> malevolent, and the malevolent ones uh, have, in fact, ruled the day for the last, you know, 3,000, 4,000 years or so. Their, their power grew, and now their power is going to wane, and this is why they're doing uh, what they do. And, and what they do is they uh, have a scorched earth policy, and it's not just on earth that this scorched earth policy uh, is implemented. No, I mean, this is habitual. This is what they do from place to place. And it really is up to us to decide in our collective consciousness that we don't want beings like this to have control over us any longer. But it, it, it starts with us and it might seem like an impossible task, but it's not. It, it's about changing 
your consciousness. It's about changing what you agree and allow to happen in your own life, in your own home. So as you look at the map, it's pretty easy to understand. And if we wanted to, you know, transpose this um, for the 70 something percent of the people watching this video as they are in the United States, you could, you know, envision a uh, a nation of the United States of America and a map today and then when it gets divided up into five parts or whatever number they choose how different it's going to be and you know again you might find that you are not in the same country that your uh, other family members are and and you'll have to do certain things to cross borders to go and visit them if you are going to be allowed to leave and then many of us might be uprooted forcibly and told we have to go to a totally new spot uh, reserved for us. So I wanted to share this to, to lend some light to uh, perhaps people that have not looked at the historical perspective before. As always, guys, thanks for your support over on Patreon, also on Ko-Fi. Much love, God bless, and namaste. Namaste.